you're not getting any younger, so. So be careful and thoughtful and intentional with who you spend your time with. Hey you, yes you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Welcome back to another episode of You're Not Getting Any Younger. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and today, well, today, we're talking to one of the most unique human beings on the planet. Radha Agrawal opens up about a topic that I have a feeling a lot of us can relate to, the topic of feeling like you belong. A rush of loneliness hit me hard when I turned 30, and I remembered having all of these friends in my 20s feeling like they were mostly gone off on their own adventure, lost on what was happening in mine. I felt like when I needed to pick up the phone or ask a friend to go to coffee with me or make plans on a Friday night, I didn't have more than two people in the entire world that I felt like I could call. I lost a sense of community and I slowly felt like I was losing all of the people around me. Social isolation is as much of a threat to longevity as obesity is. And loneliness is as risky as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. It turns out that it is dangerous to Netflix and chill. Rada tackles this topic in her new book, Belong, which answers the questions of how do I find my people and create communities in the real world? Her name might sound familiar because she's the co-founder of Daybreaker and the co-founder of Thinks. I have a feeling you're going to enjoy this week's episode. And if you love this podcast, and I thank you for listening to this podcast, make sure you subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. And hey, come join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. I'd love to see you there. You know what's so interesting is every time I have a guest on, I do a ton of research. And the most fun part about researching you was getting to look at all of the amazing outfits that you wear to Daybreaker. So (laughs) my first question that I'm super curious to know is where do you get all of your insanely fun outfits? (laughs) Etsy is your best friend, first of all. Um, No, but I, I, uh, so many amazing artists are in our community at Daybreaker. Um, so I often like to support them and, and purchase their incredible, unique pieces of, of wearable art. So uh, it's definitely not from, from a chain store by any means, but, uh, you know, but, but yeah, my favorite thing to do is support artists. That's so great. And for those who don't know what the heck Daybreaker is, how would you summarize what it is in a couple of sentences? Totally. Daybreaker is an early morning dance community where uh, we wake up at sunrise before going to work on a weekday morning. We put on costumes and we go to these amazing secret venues that we reveal about two weeks before the event happens. And people wake up and dance uh, without alcohol. We serve green juice, coffee and tea and healthy treats. Instead of alcohol, we hug you. Instead of uh, we, you know, instead of have a mean bouncer at the door, so we have a hugging committee at the door, um, and it's just a wonderful, connected, uh, energetic morning of dancing your face off uh, in costume with glitter on your face before going to work. Um, and then it starts with a one-hour yoga experience into a two-hour dance party, and then ends with a secret concert. You know, I have to tell you, when I first found out about it a couple of years ago, I wanted to go so badly, but I didn't have a single person to go with. And finally, I was sick of being upset about that. So I bought a ticket. I bought a onesie because I think it was like pajama (laughs) themed or something. And I showed up and I spent the first 20 minutes hiding in the back, watching people dance, listening to the DJ. And then all of a sudden, an actual marching band came out (laughs) of nowhere, started playing these instruments. And I said to myself, Jen, 
F this, you know, who cares? who cares what you look like? I made my way to the front. I was touching the stage. I went wild. I mean, I just danced my face off for two hours and it was the most incredible thing in the world, especially because I didn't know anyone. It made it a little bit better. But one of the things about Daybreaker, and I've been to a bunch of them, is that people there are so freaking happy. So (laughs) what do you think is the right combination going on at Daybreaker that makes people just really filled with joy in a sober environment? Absolutely. Well, first of all, it's a self-selecting group of people who set their alarms, right, to wake up at at the crack of dawn to come and dance. And it takes a sort of an adventurous spirit to say, you know what? I don't need alcohol. I don't need drugs to have fun. I want to, I just want to go and get to know myself again, the authentic version of me. So people come there with this spirit of saying F yes, you know, to life. And, and, um, and also, you know, one of the things I read about this in my book, actually, um, I'm I'm coming out of the book this September called Belong. Super excited about it. Um, But in there, I open source exactly what we did at Daybreakers, that anybody wants to create these types of experience that inspire this type of energy and connection that you felt and that we hope to, you know, to inspire across across the world where we're in is this concept that we call dose. And, you know, in, in my sort of, you know, I, I design experiences, human experiences for a living. And one of the things I always think about is not just, you know, uh, let me rent a venue, let me hire some DJs, let me, you know, let me kind of hire some performers. But really I think about what I call, how do we get humans to release their dose? And when you think about dose, think about what drugs, medicine, right? Uh, Over the counter, whatever that we're taking. But actually in my, in my research on the science of human experiences and dance, I discovered that dose, uh, if I unscramble the four happy brain chemicals that we release from our minds, it spells the word dose. So dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Can you believe it? Spell out the word dose. Crazy. Yeah. So our four happy brain chemicals that we can naturally learn how to release on our own is what we actually help people do at Daybreaker. So you know, the dopamine you get from waking up in the morning, it's the pleasure reward of setting your alarm and getting something checked off your list. It's like that, oh my gosh, I got something done. That's a dopamine hit, right? But you also get dopamine rush from listening to music. Music is a wonderful source of, of that release. The oxytocin you get from the hugging committee at the door, you get that from the contact high of being around hundreds of people at 6 a.m. who are all coming from the same place, their bed, so they're optimistic and joyful and studies have shown that mornings you're the happiest and, and sort of most energetic version of yourself. So, um, so the oxytocin release, you know, one of the things about humans that are, that's happening today is that we're, especially Americans, we are so physically starved for affection. Did you know that Americans are the number one viewer of porn in the world? And yet in a study, in a famous study done by this researcher, she found that Americans on average touched each other upwards of once in a conversation over the course of several hours versus Mexicans and Puerto Ricans who touch each other upwards of 130 times in a conversation. So, you know, we are so physically starved for it and yet we turn our attention to, you know, porn and other sort of darker means, right? So the oxytocin at Daybreaker is so critical to inspire that sense of community, that sense of belonging um, so that you get there. And then the serotonin, the, the S in dose, you get from our MCs. We train all of our MCs across the country to really make you feel connected to the experience. I don't know if you remember the MC at, at the events you went to, but you know, do they do they give you that feeling of let go, stop judging yourself. This is your time now to connect with yourself. Be here now. Um, really, uh, you know, really connect. Did you, did you did you remember the MC from your from the events that you went to? Do I remember it? I mean, <laughs> it's one of the best parts. Like I have gone to freaking Tony Robbins events. <laughs> less, you know, so in love with life than going to a daybreaker. It's (laughs) incredible. And it just, it it does completely wake you up. And you mentioned your book, Belong. Find your people, create community, and live a more connected life. It comes out officially September 4th. The book is the most interesting thing I've ever held in my hand. Mm -hmm. To me, it's a fusion of a workbook, a help book, a picture book. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on, but one of the craziest things was I felt like this book entered my life at a time I desperately needed. I feel like the older I've gotten and the more successful I've become as an entrepreneur, 
the more I've isolated myself, totally. the more I've lost my tribe of people. And the interesting thing about belong is the first part of the book talks about looking inside of yourself. So what kind of advice for, do you have for people who are trying to get away from social isolation and find a community or start a community? Absolutely. So, uh, by the way, the, I let me just finish that the, the E in dose is endorphins, oh, right? And you yep. get that from working out and you get that from, from sweating. And, and so let me just close that loop there. Um, but, but yeah, so, so going in, I mean, so, you know, I think so much of belonging, so much of community building, we so often think about sort of looking outside of ourselves. We desperately want to find friends, right, who get us, who connect to us, but we don't really know where to start. But the best place to start is within yourself. So for me, you know, my journey began, I was 30 years old. This is almost nine years ago now. And um, I looked myself in the mirror and I realized I didn't belong. And and to your point, I was, you know, sort of rising in my entrepreneurial career. I was finding success and, and, and yeah, it can be, you know, the the, the expression, you are lonely on top is really real, you know? Um, So I felt really sort of isolated and and, um, not connected to my community from my 20s. Um, so that began this journey of self-exploration first. So, you know, the first exercise I, I suggest everyone to do is to write down a three-column list. Right? Column one is all the qualities that you're looking for in a friend, which, by the way, when was the last time you wrote down what you're looking for in a friend? You know, you, get, you do that maybe for your career, or you yeah. might do that for your love interest, your romance, right? But, like, when do you ever write down... I want a friend who leans in and says, F yes. I want a friend who likes to work out with me. I want a friend who's adventurous. I want a friend who goes out of their way to give to, their, to, to one another. I want a friend who's not just on their, on their cell phone and, and on social media the whole time, but who's going to be fully present, right? Like I wrote down all these things I was looking for in a friend. I, no stone was left unturned, you know? And that was like this moment of, of like, wow, this is what I want in a friend versus what society tells me. I should be sort of wanting in a friend or what the person sitting next to me at my office or my next door neighbor who I happen to stumble into as a friend who doesn't kind of fill me up, but I'm sort of going along with it because I don't know where to start, um, you know, is, is sort of where I'm at right now, right? So, so really beginning this journey with, with what are the qualities I'm looking for in a friend, writing them down, writing down everything, right? Everything you think about that, that aligns with your values your interests, and your abilities. So the second column in the three-column list is all the qualities that you don't want in a friend, right? So I don't want friends who are shit talkers, negative Nellies, shoulder shruggers, you know those friends who are like, meh, sure, who write words like meh, or like, <laughs> or like who write like words like nah, and nope, and yep. Like, yep. I just find that to be just, I don't know, I'm like, there's it's the same number of letters in the word yes, with an exclamation point than there are in yeah, you know, or yep. And, and I always found that to be very interesting. Anyway, um, and, then, and then column three is all the qualities that I needed to embody in order to attract the friends that I wanted, right? So mm-hmm. I needed to be a better listener. I needed to be less of a workaholic. I love my job. I, you know, it, it's, it's hard for me to put my computer down, but to really prioritize staying true to my commitments was something that I, I could be better at. I could be, I could be more patient, you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you're always nitpicking what's wrong versus what's cele- celebrating what's going right. You know, so there's so many things that I, that I realized about myself that I need to show up in a, in a more meaningful way that, that were aligned with my personal values. Because really what happens is what you put out is what you get in, right? Like the energy that you radiate is the energy that you get back in. So if you're ra- radiating negativity or insecurity or comparison or perfectionism, right? That's what you're going to get back. People who are, people who are attracted to those types of people are people, are, are, are those people, right? So, so, so for me, when I began this journey of self exploration first and, and, and really got to know, wow, I'm showing up in this way. Can I be showing up more authentically, more, you know, more, a better version of myself? That was the beginning of this complete life transformation for me. Um, you know, and then I began to sort of, you know, there's so many Mark sizes I'm going in, in my book, but, um, that sort of, you know, kind of a few, a few sort of starting points for, for anyone listening out there, um, to really begin this, this journey of self exploration. And I call it gentle self-awareness, right? Because awareness can be pretty harsh, right? Like imagine an officer stopping you on the highway. And he's like, sir, madam, are you aware of how fast you were going in that lane? Right. <laughs> so oh, like, sir. right. So awareness can be really intense sometimes, but if you just went into this journey of self-exploration with, gen- with gentleness, with loving kindness, with, with a sense of, hey, 
you know, however you've been showing up is okay. Let's just be fully tr in, in truth right now, in truth mode and in, in, in integrity of, you know, let's not try to say, but I'm this way because of my parents or I'm just, just really ask yourself, how am I showing up in every conversation? When I walk through a door into a room and I have a doorway exercise in my, in my book as well, where I talk about, you know, the doorway being a wonderful reset threshold that you can use as a, as a, as a wonderful, um, just kind of as a wonderful reset opportunity for whenever you walk into a room. Um, but, but how am I sure, how am I walking into a room and that, that, that gentle self-awareness will make the process of self-exploration so much more fun and exciting and adventurous than, you know, tense and, and exhausting and, and scary and, and sort of fear inducing of like, what am I going to discover? It should be a fun process getting to know yourself. Right. Um, yeah. And then also the other piece is so much of, of personal development, I find, you know, is, is while so wonderful, we can get trapped in it, right? We get trapped in our personal development of trying to make ourselves just right to be able to go out and do the thing that we want to be doing. But we have to also practice going out and living the life, you know, living, living in community, living in belonging. So, you know, we go through this journey of self-exploration, but really with the goal of, you know, sort of within one, two months, going out and really sort of going for it with, with deep courage, vulnerability, and intention, what I call getting thick, getting vulnerable, intentional, and courageous. Um, so, so, you know, and then, and then after that, there's a sort of journey of, of, of going out. So once you've gone in, you now go out. And in that process of going out, right, I, I call it the four stages of community. And for me, that started with, okay, great. The outside, imagine a bullseye. And the outside of the, of the four circles is this outer ring called the exploratory stage of community where light touch, you know, you want to go out and you're like, okay, you're an entrepreneur, you're a blogger, you're, you know, you're, um, you know, you're, you're interested in, in, in um, creating sort of wonderful stories for others. What are all the communities out there that do what I do, you know, that really can, can connect with my values, my interests and what I'm good at my abilities. So, for me, that was, you know, that was, I want to explore entrepreneurial community. So I went to all these entrepreneurial summit, summits, like Summit Series and, and um, the Transformation Leadership Council and all kinds of wonderful places. Um, and then I also was like, okay, what else do I care about? What am I curious about? Oh, I love festivals. I love it. I love music and dance culture. So I began going to all kinds of festivals. And the one that really spoke to me in my exploration phase was was Burning Man, mm. um, right? So I, I've been this, I'm going back to my seventh time this year. Wow. In a, row, in a row, seven years in a row. And it's my annual creative reset. Um, so, 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 you know, this is a wonderfully exciting phase. Like I always say like pick five, six, seven communities to explore based on your via chart, your values, interests, and abilities. Imagine three circles that all connect to one another that have values, interests, and abilities within them. And then from there you can say, okay, great. Well, based on these, my via, I'm going to explore these, you know, five, six, seven um, communities and see which one feels good. And then from there, you graduate to the next rung. So one rung in closer to the bullseye, and that's your participatory phase. So you go from exploratory, I'm sort of in observation mode to getting my hands dirty to participatory. Like in my book, I talk about the cornerstone of belonging, the cornerstone of making friends, the cornerstone of feeling the sense of community is participating, getting your hands dirty. And, 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 and leaning in and saying F yes, not just mm -hmm. kind of going in one foot in, one foot out or tiptoeing in, but like really being an FYF is what I call it in my book, a fuck yep. yeah, a fuck yeah friend. <laughs> or, or if you want to bleep that out, an F yes. No, I love that part. That was, <laughs> that was such a good part. Can you explain to people what an fuck yeah friend is? Yes, totally. So a fuck yeah friend is just somebody who's going to say, heck yeah, I'm in. Oh my gosh. F yeah. I'm going to go to that thing. F yeah. I'm going to try Daybreaker. What? 6am dance party. Count me in. Right. What? Wear costumes. Okay, cool. I'm going to that. Wait, what? Make, you know, br brunch at midnight. Sweet. Let's do that. Right. Like we want to, people want to be around people who lean in and say F yeah, not the shoulder shruckers or negative, negative Nellies, even if it feels cool back in the day, yeah. it's not cool anymore. But back in the day, it was cool to be like, you know, sort of aloof and, and, and whatever about stuff. But today, you know, the, the, the F, yeah, FYF gets the, gets the worm, gets the, gets the joy, gets the energy of life. And, and to find that in ourselves, because each of us, I don't care if you're 65, you're 25, if you've been sort of in, uh, you know, if, if you've been 
sort of someone who has had a, a tough upbringing. I mean, I had both a tough upbringing, but also a joyful upbringing. But, you know, it, I decided it was, it was a conscious decision to say, I'm going to be an FYF. When friends ask me to do things, I'm not just going to say, sure, I'll do that. Or, yep, I'll go to that. I'm going to show up with gold stars. <laughs> I'm going to show yeah. up with, I'm going to show up with really fun gifts to bring like paper crowns of, to wear for everyone to wear it on their heads. Or I'm going to, you know, turn the, whatever experience is invited uh, you know, where I'm invited into, into something that's really fun. I'm going to, I'm going to add to it, not just kind of tiptoe in. So people want those people around. Like I always like, you know, my best friends are the ones who came into my life with such an FYF attitude. And they're the ones that I, that fill me up. Like I call that an equal energy exchange. Like, you know, tell me you don't have friends that deplete you when you hang out with them. They just take and vampire suck your energy from you. Right. And then there's oh, a, sure. Right. And there's the other friends who you hang out with them. You're like, oh, my God, I, I feel like refueled. I feel like my tank is full of premium gas right now, the expensive yeah. kind from the gas station, yeah. you know, and and those are the ones that you double down on. Right. And you just have to, again, be gently self-aware. of: Are you the person who's vampiring someone's energy or are you the person who's adding to someone's energy? And, and you will quickly once you do the exercise in the book, once you begin to become gently self-aware, Will you know how how you've been showing up? So, um, and then after, and then one, and then two. Sorry, two levels back in to the to the four stages community. So it's exploratory, participatory, outer core, and then inner core. Um, so then you know you you after you participate, you find the people that you love. I call them your outer core community, and then from there you'll find the three to five best friends who fill you up and make you feel a deep sense of belonging. That's your inner core community. I really think that this should have been a class that they teach you when you graduate college because the art of making friends, feeling like you belong is something that you're not going to explore unless you're self-aware or you lose a lot of people in your life. And I think that it's normal that as you grow up, as you choose your path in life, you lose the people that were people you were best friends with in college or in your early 20s. As you become an entrepreneur, you lose friends who don't understand that life. Do you think it's normal and okay to shed a community and then go ahead and find a new one that you think fits better for you over time? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I call that graduating, you know, like yeah. if your friends and if your community members are no longer meeting you sort of energetically and are continuing to stay in their cycle of negativity or, or spiraling in, in their own world, you know, I call that the, the, the friendship life cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So we all have this, we go through this friendship life cycle of, um, you know, you, you, you meet somebody, you fall in love with them, right? Um, yeah. I call that your, your gestation phase, right? So, so it's gestation. Like you meet somebody, you're like, wow, like you give me so much energy, right? So from, from the gestation phase, you know, that's when you really decide to give energy to that person to really support um, and nurture the beginnings of this relationship. Because when, you, when you're first starting a friendship, right, it, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of of, of energy for you. So every friendship does, and we, we're so busy right now, right? So the reason why it's important to shed is because you've now gone through the friendship life cycle. And, and you know, from the gestation phase, you go to frustration, right? So the frustration phase is when, is when you sort of are flexing your, um, you're flexing your muscles and you've, you've kind of made it past that feeling of, oh my gosh, this person really gets me to now, okay, we're really establishing our boundaries. We're figuring out what, you know, if you're a Trump supporter or, or a, or, <laughs> or, or not. And, and let's not talk about politics. Right. So like, um, let's just focus on X, Y, and Z. So, so there's gestation, frustration, cooperation, creation, and evolution. These are the five sort of stages of friendship cycle that I've identified. And an evolution is the final phase of the friendship cycle. And in that phase, and, and to, your, to your question, you know, we can either evolve together, right? And we can continue going around and around the friendship cycle all of our lives. We have so many friends who continue, we continue to grow together. So we continue to go back from evolution and gestation. We go back from the feeling of, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm evolving, I'm growing. And then now our friendship is new again. I'm back in the gestation phase, right? But there's some friendships, and I have so many of these friendships from high school, elementary school, or, or just even, even in New York City, where we can evolve, and that's okay. And, and you know, as humans, 
we're so nostalgic that we get resentful, we feel angry, we feel sad. Boy, have I felt sad when friendships have ended for me in so many, in, in, you know, in, in, in so many uh, moments in my life. But now as I look back on it, you know, everything is exactly how it should be, right? So if you don't feel connected or energized when you hang out with your certain friends anymore, then it's time to evolve. And, and they will go through that, like imagine like these beautiful circles, either going on the circle together or now it turns into two circles and, the, and their circle is now evolving away from you. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. So, you know, where, where I've been now with, with friendships that evolve and where I'm saying goodbye to friendships that no longer serve me, I deeply thank them. And I, in my mind, I, I deeply thank them, um, you know, through, through it's, instead of just kind of ghosting them, I'll just say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm really focusing on this aspect of my life right now. Um, I think you're, you're awesome. And I, I deeply honor and cherish our time together. And, um, I'm just, I'm just really focusing on, on my family and my, and my book and, 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 and my, and sort of my entrepreneurial community. Um, and I'm so excited to support you, um, in ways that I can, you know, and, yeah. and, it, and it ends up being this like beautiful experience rather than, rather than a, than a negative one. And, and, and if for whatever reason we just stop talking, um, and for me, instead of getting angry about it or, or, ha or asking them to, you know, um, to forgive me, <laughs> you know, I now just, I just say, look, let's honor the time that we had together. Let's just say, like, wow, what a beautiful moment in time that we shared. You're evolving in this direction. I'm evolving this direction. And boy, that's a beautiful thing. It definitely yeah. is. But it's, I have to tell you, I recently had a great friend break up with me, similar to that. And it's so painful to go through. But everything you're saying about the friendship life cycle is, is really, really true. And you know, your book is a really great resource for people who are looking to shift into a new community and also be more self-aware. There's something that I read in a Glamour article that you wrote that people who are in their 20s are, are feeling twice as often as lonely as people in their 50s or 60s. And you Absolutely. also tell people to get off of the phone, which probably means get off of your Netflix and go outside and meet people. So what advice do you have for those people who might be a little bit more introverted and might be so anxious about going somewhere, going somewhere alone to like a day breaker to meet people and join a community? Totally. Um, so again, the first step is to go inside, get to know yourself and, and really ask yourself, where does this label of introversion come from? Right? Like when did you start calling yourself an introvert? And chances are it's because you had, you know, you had not had the good luck of, of finding friends that filled you up earlier on in your life. Um, or that you had had, you know, sort of friends that, 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 um, yeah, that I guess depleted you. Like for me, I actually called myself an introvert, um, for, for, for several years, um, in my twenties when, when I was dating a guy who also identified as an introvert and, um, and we sort of isolated ourselves, but really that wasn't me. It really wasn't me at all. It was just that I was going along with this, with this feeling and, and I was hanging out with people that didn't fill me up. And so I think step one is breaking all the labels that we had. Once I broke away from my label of introversion and I said, wait a minute, actually I do like people. I just want to hang out with specific people who fill me up, who align with my values, interests and abilities, who give me energy. Right. And, and that could be a one-on-one -on -one, that could be, um, that could be in smaller groups that could be a large daybreaker setting, but in a room where I can disappear and dance, just like you said, you know, you're, you're alone in this room, but that's full of love that you can be an introvert and go there and feel a sense of deep belonging, you know? Um, so, so I think it's, it's step one is, is shifting your mindset away from all the labels that we've given to ourselves and first take the time to go back into our history instead of racing through our social feeds, right? Right now that take us immediately into the future what's next, but really ask yourself, why am I labeling myself as a certain way? What is it about my past that, that made me feel socially anxious in the first place? What is it about um, my past that, that um, is scarring me from making friends in the future? What is it that I'm limiting? How is it li that I'm limiting myself that just because I'm 45, I can't make friends again? You know, where are all of these, where are all these sort of limitations coming from? And then really ask, realizing, you know, that if you just radiate the most authentic version of yourself, 
then you will make friends your whole life. If you say F yes, if you commit to participating in a community, if you commit to exploring and getting out there, getting off your phone and getting out there, you will find a community that I can't even tell you how I thought that I would never find my people. I was like, how am I going to find someone who likes to work out, who likes to build, build um, businesses, who likes to, to tra you know, adventure travel, likes to dance, likes to go to Burning Man. You know, and all of a sudden I found all these people in one, in, in, in individuals. I, I used to have to silo all my relationships where I had my workout friends, my burner friends, my smart intellectual friends. But now they're all in one, and just like me. And because we, because I, I, I took the time, effort, and energy to find them. And, um, and we can be pretty impatient in this process. It took me three years of, of patient, vulnerable, intentional, courageous sort of ex exploration before I, I, really, I really found my tribe. And I just can't tell you that this is by far the biggest thing in my life that has impacted me in terms of my happiness, in terms of my success. I, I attribute my entire financial success, my business success with both Daybreaker and Thinks, my underwear company, um, to, to my community um, supporting me and giving me the wings to say, okay, I could do this. Um, and and I, think, I think that's, you know, that's, the, that's, I'm, I'm, you know, that's a beautiful case study for everyone to hear that, you know, I woke up at 30 years old, didn't feel any belonging. I, I really felt lost and alone. And then nine years later, you know, I, it just like a completely transformed life because I made community a priority. Um, One of the things that's so incredibly interesting about you is, is how authentic you are. You know, if you look at your Instagram and your Twitter, you are just, you seem very real. We've never really met face to face, <laughs> but you just seem very real. You're very, very honest. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about is that years ago, you had a career on Wall Street and you gave all of that up to become a serial social entrepreneur. What made you decide, I have to mess up my life? And what was going through your head as you ditched a steady paycheck to then create businesses you didn't know were going to succeed? Totally. Well, first of all, you know, when you, when you, when you witness uh, wild experiences, um, you realize that we are all living on borrowed time. So I, I had just uh, graduated college or investment banking, and 9/11 um, happened. So I'm, mm. you know, I'm, I'm, I was 22 when 9/11 happened, and that was the aha moment that I need. And of course, you know, everyone listening out there, God forbid, there'll ever be 9/11 again. But there's moments in your life, there's moments in history we often forget, right? What happened in history because we're making the same mistakes over and over again, but to look back and realize, wow, you know, the mystery of life is that you never know when it's going to end. Yes. You know? And, and so, so for me, that moment of, of just seeing thousands of people, you know, sort of lose their families, um, during nine 11, um, and, and living and being a wall street, a banker myself, um, and feeling that sort of sense of urgency around, Oh my gosh, I am, I could, that could have been me. I trained the world trade center. I could, that could have definitely been me. Um, and, you know, that was the moment that I realized that you guys, like, we literally only have <laughs> so many years uh, of life and how are we going to live it? Um, trying to be rich and trying to prove to our parents that we can make it, <laughs> that, that we can prove to ourselves that we're good enough or to prove to the world or the ex-boyfriend that broke our hearts that we're, that we're worthy, right? Like, why are we, what are we chasing with money, power, and fame? Um, and I think, and I think that's, that's been sort of indoctrinated in us, um, by society, by media, by culture, um, as, and also as, a, as from, from celebrities just across the board, right? Like this is the fix to all your problems, money, power, fame. If you're the nerd, now you get the girls, if you have money, mm -hmm. right? It's like, so there's, there's, so, so to me that, that was that moment that was just like, wait a minute, like none of that matters. What is, what is it that matters? Okay. What, what's my purpose on this planet? It's not just to make myself rich or, or be famous. It's to support and serve the world. Well, how best can I serve the world? And I also, of course, I am a conscious capitalist. I really do believe in the idea of doing good and doing well. The so social enterprise to me is a very interesting space because you can create a business that is very scalable, very profitable, while also scaling impact. So I think that's a very, that, that to me was, that was like a, oh, cool, that exists too. You don't have to do a nonprofit. I can actually create products that have deep value that that solve problems that um that people want to buy and support 
while also supporting women in developing countries, while also eradicating isolation and loneliness, while also supporting um, and helping eradicate the obesity epidemic. Right? There's so many, um, so many ways that we can solve problems through social enterprise. And I think in this world that we live in, we have to create value in order to create change. Um, we can't keep asking for, for handouts. Um, yeah, you are incredibly right. And the interesting thing about the businesses you've started is they do provide that value and they do have that social enterprise attached to it, but they're also extremely and wildly unique. And I started the company Rise Made for Hire four years ago. And when I did- I love it, by the way. It's thank so Thank you. People- Tell me about it. What is it? Strangers hire me to be their bridesmaid and it's been four years. I've worked hundreds of weddings, but when I started it, people called me crazy. People tried to tell me, don't quit your day job. People tried to tell me this was dumb. I never listened to them. And four years later, I sort of laugh at that time in my life. But with all of these cool companies you started that were also super out of the box, did people try to stop you? Did people call you crazy? Did you ever maybe start to believe them? Or did you just say, no way, I'm going to do my thing? Yeah. You know, it's so funny. Um, there are so many haters, and believe it or not, most of the haters are women. Um, I think that tide is changing, thank God, with Me Too and, and all these wonderful um, sort of organizations that have, have brought us all together. But, but certainly, I'm sure you face this too as a, as a successful entrepreneur. Um, but but that, that has been you know, sort of the biggest challenge, which is you know, women trying to minimize uh, other women. And so, um, and also male investors. Um, so it's such a so chauvinistic world that also tied is shifting as well. Thank God. But in my, you know, 10 years ago, boy, was it hard to get anyone to, to even talk to me? Um, you know, my sister had to ask a, a British friend who had a fancy British accent, a male to present a, a, a business plan because she knew that this, the odds of him, you know, getting us an investment, was higher than if we made the presentation, we made the pitch, you know? So mm -hmm. the tide has really, really shifted. Um, but yeah, I think, I think um, you know, any disruptive product or service is going to make people uncomfortable. It's going to ruffle feathers. It's going to make people angry. It's going to make people uncomfortable. Um, it's going to make people want to take you down. It's going to make people envious of you. Um, and all of those things I've experienced and all it does is gives me even more fire, you know, under my yeah. belly to, to continue being an agent for change. And thank God there's such an amazing group of women like me and like you who aren't sort of afraid anymore of being taken down, who aren't afraid anymore of, um, of, of sort of, you know, having, uh, negativity or or um envy pushed our way you know so it's it's um it's uh it's an exciting time to have women come together to say hey i see you i hear you i feel you i'm, I'm actually you know five months pregnant right now oh, no, <laughs> and i started thank you and i started this uh this incredible group called the modern mamas um about um six weeks ago where i just started whatsapp thread with about 20 women, 20 modern mamas who are badass CEOs or entrepreneurs or, 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 you know, amazing sort of women juggling both their careers and, and motherhood. And this thread has given me life. When I tell you what this thread has done for me and how I've been able to balance just, you know, the, the whiplash of being a CEO and running companies, being an author, all this other stuff to, oh my God, I've, hormones and all this stuff happening and, and my, you know, and my, my fiance doesn't understand what I'm going through and I feel so alone and that, you know, there's just so much stuff yeah. happening. And, and this group of women, we have come together to support each other and share our vulnerable stories. And it's honestly given me life. And so, you know, having the courage to just start. And what's funny is that all these women, as when I started the group, they all said to me at different points, they said, God, I wish you know, they have two-year-olds now or three. I was like, God, I wish I'd started this two years ago and I was going through this. And all, none of it is, is rocket science. It's just someone saying, let me stick my neck out. Let me start a WhatsApp thread. Let me start a, a group me chat. You know, let me just start a group on email or whatever with, and just put five or six people on there who 
who are, you know, aligned with your values, your interests and abilities and see what happens. And, you know, now we're 25, 20, 25 women. The thread just is like pages and pages and pages long of skill sharing, of, of emotional sharing, of supporting one another. And, um, and, and again, it's just about one person saying, let me create this space. Um, and part of what my book does um, for, for everybody listening out there is to demystify that sort of how do I do this first thing? You know, just like it's very, very simple. None of it is rocket science. It's just about having the courage to do it. You know? Amen to that. I, I, it's just about starting. And, yes. and I think that that is something that you are incredible at teaching people. And the book is so incredible at teaching people. And I'm so grateful that you're on this podcast. I want to end with a quick lightning round. So I'm just going to ask you a couple of fast questions and feel free to say whatever comes to mind first. Awesome. When you were a kid, what did you want to grow up to become? Oh man, at the time I wanted to be a doctor because uh, that's what my parents wanted me to be. <laughs> but if I was to be personally, um, what I wanted to be, I probably, I don't know, like whatever every kid wants, like like Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Every kid wants to be an astronaut, but I like the Michael Jackson. That's I want to cool. be Michael Jackson. <laughs> What's your dream job now? I'm living it. I'm living it. I throw dance parties and I help people self-express and explore themselves um, 20, in 23 cities around the world. You know, I'm literally living the dream. And, um, and now actually I'm working on a new project called Live It Up. Um, and Live It Up is, this new, is a new dream. It's a sister company to Daybreaker. And it's a, a life school, a modern life school. Um, for young professionals um, to learn life skills they don't learn in the classroom. That's texted to you every morning. Wow. So we've, we've brought in some of the best experts in the world from the founder and CEO of Whole Foods Market, John Mackey, to the number one functional medicine doctor, 11 New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Mark Hyman, a teacher about nutrition essentials. I'm doing a 21 day module on community building. Um, we have so many incredible people teaching about love, sex, and relationships, time management, financial abundance. Um, self-love, mindfulness, like there's all these wonderful, adulting 101 is probably my favorite one where you learn how to fold fitted sheets and <laughs> take, take wine scenes off your shirt and all kinds of life skills that you don't, you don't learn, you know, and, and the goal of that is to deepen our connection with our community, um, to give them life skills and tools um, that they can take with them for the rest of their lives. And it's a 12 month challenge. Um, and you can sign up at goliveitup.com. I love it. I might be your newest participant. Yes. What, what is the best advice anyone has ever given you? Well, by the way, that launches November 6th, so t- stay tuned. I'm going to put it on my calendar right <laughs> now. <laughs> you will love it, honestly. I know you. You will totally, totally love it. It yeah. sounds right up my alley. <laughs> what, did, what is the best advice that anybody has ever given you? Um, the best advice is that you are as good as the five closest friends you keep. True. Wow. You are wow. as good as the five closest friends you keep and, and really choose them wisely. I love that. How do you deal with moments of failure or pushing through failure? Well, first I cry my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but, uh, you know, I think that's actually important. I think it's important to, to feel, you know, I think, I think we, I think so often we're like, you know, pull yourself up by the by your you know, bootstraps and, and you know keep marching on. But step one is feel, cry, mourn, mm-hmm. suffer, you know, like get get okay with that vulnerable kind of feeling and 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 and, and just get rid of the, all of that. Like don't let it get stuck inside of your joints and your and your muscles and your cells, right? Like first mm-hmm. first get rid of it. And then and then surround yourself with amazing, amazing friends um, and support network and, and community members, whether it's a mentor. I have several mentors um, who've, who've given me so much, so much advice along the years. But, um, but surround yourself with people who can give you perspective because so often our, our failures are so internalized that we don't realize a that we everybody else around us has failed in the exact same way, <laughs> and then also that they can share insights that and also perspective that you may not have thought about. Um, so I always say like don't try to solve all the problems on your own. Like really, really lean on your friends and your community members. They're there for you. And let me tell you, 
they love it when you're calling with problems. <laughs> you know, like when you're like, I'm killing it. Nobody cares about you. <laughs> yes. Amen to that. <laughs> My final question for you is fill in the blank. You're not getting any younger. So. So start living it up. So get, you know, get out there, like be vulnerable, get, you know, be courageous, um, be intentional about who, who you spend time with. Um, yeah, you're not getting younger. So be careful and, and, and thoughtful and intentional with who you spend your time with. Oh, I love it. I just got the chills, Rada. You are amazing. Please tell our <laughs> listeners where they can find out more about you, your projects, and of course, belong your new book. Yeah. So um, you can find me um, at daybreaker.com. At, and then you can find information on my book um, at belongbook.com. And then my personal website is radaagarwal.com. And that launches in the next few weeks. Amazing. It was so great having you on the show. Thank you so much for all of your incredible advice. And I hope to meet you soon on a Daybreaker dance floor. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there. So thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.